Hi. Uh, so I'm Varun Varma, and I'm from the University of Exeter. And uh, at Exeter, we're collaborating with uh, Seb Oliver from the University of Sussex for the data science side of our project, which is looking to use remote sensing to monitor uh, global banana production systems. So uh, bananas are actually a really important crop. Nobody believes me when I say it, but they're actually a really important crop globally. It's just so easily available that you don't think of it as something being under risk. So it is um, amongst the top 10 crops in the world in terms of area under cultivation, as well as the number of calories produced. It is a staple source of carbohydrate and calories in a number of developing tropical countries. Uh, both producing and non-producing countries contribute towards nutritional diversity, uh, such as that in the UK. And also, 15% of all bananas produced are exported, and that trade sustains national economies, especially uh, in Latin America. Right, so uh, at Exeter, uh, we have a project, GFS funded, called Securing the Future of UK's Favorite Fruit. Long title, Bananics for short. Uh, and amongst other things, what we do is we look at the effects of climate change, extreme events, and how that will cause production shocks, if it will. Uh, also impacts of diseases, especially there's a focus on Fusarium wilt, which is a fungal disease. Uh, recently, it's been spreading across the world, People are worried about it reaching Latin America. It has as of July, and so panic. Uh, so that's also another aspect we're looking at. But whenever, any, in any bit of work that, uh, that we're doing, especially with, which, which looks at the global production system, uh, a key bit of information is, should be is, where do bananas actually grow? Is there a map for where, these, where bananas grow? You can get this country grows so much, this country grows so much, but where exactly does it grow? And uh, there, are, there, there is a map, but it's of course resolution, talking about 10, 20 kilometers. Uh, it's outdated, 2005, and very large errors. The very large parts of, let's say, India, which is the largest producer, where there are big chunks, which, you know, high producing areas, which are not there. So large errors, and that's because it's modeled area. It's not observed area, right? And that feeds into all the kind of analyses that we do. So we've had to make assumptions in a lot of the work we've done, and this is something we recently published uh, two things we recently published. That looks at the effect of climate change from the past and into the future, looking at banana productivity. Um, uh, then we have this one here, which is looking at black cigatoka, which is a fungal disease which is already established in Latin America, and how climate change changes disease risk. It's basically increasing. Uh, and you have to make assumptions about these things. This is work which is completed. It's ongoing work. We've got a collaboration with ETH Zurich and Banalino, which is the local growers association in the Dominican Republic looking at the impacts of Hurricanes Maria and Irma in 2017. Category five hurricanes, two weeks apart, hitting the north of the Dominican Republic, and we've finished mapping of the of flooding, we're looking at mapping the production system. Or if we look at Fusarium wilt, which, where will it spread? We only know where it'll spread if we know where the host plant is, right? But we don't have that information. So can we fill that knowledge gap? And that's the goal of this project. Um, so global mapping of banana production systems. Basically, I stumbled upon, when I was working with some uh, synthetic aperture radar images, bananas actually pop out really well on synthetic aperture radar, right? It's a function of it being a perennial and low variance compared to the rest of the landscape, right? So a lot of perennial crops, actually, synthetic aperture radar is very good for it. But yeah, so can we use that? Can we leverage that, build a data product with a global extent, high resolution, regularly updated, right, uh, designed by, so contributing different data. So nobody controls this. It has to be, there has to be contributions from different uh, stakeholders, industry, uh, growers associations, researchers, to build an open source, open access data portal as a starter, right? Uh, and I'll come to the three main objectives. But on the food side, we've got Exeter, where we understand the production system. We've got collaborators, and we've got expertise in remote sensing. From the Sussex side, they've got expertise in remote sensing, plus they're good with uh, high performance computing because this is a big data job, right? We're talking for a single snapshot across the world. That's back of the envelope calculations, the 100 terabytes of data which needs to be crunched, right? So in three stages, uh, this project from the, that's the first one, get that single banana distribution map. Once we have that, we can start training other data sets to build a time series of how the production system has changed, how distribution has changed, what has caused it to change, 
what are those drivers? Economic, is it, is it to do with you know, fertilizer availability, socioeconomic, so on. And then once we've got that, combine these maps with production data, climate data, vegetation indices, and build a production forecasting model. Because these are perennial crops. They have a nine month cycle between each harvest. Right? So you should be able to forecast six months down the line at least. Right? So we started all this work with a workshop in Costa Rica. Why Costa Rica? Because Corbana, which is the uh, local growers association based in Costa Rica, which does all the monitoring, you know, advice to farmers, they are based in Costa Rica. If Costa Rica does something, the rest of the Latin America banana community listens. Right? So that's our start of our network. Uh, so we had a three-day workshop. First day, because TR4, Fusarium World had just gotten to Latin America about two or three months back, uh, we dealt with pests and diseases, right? So we've got collaborations going on with them for biocontrol. Two and three, day two and three is about mapping. You know, what kind of products are they using? What are their priorities? What are our priorities? What's the government's priorities? What's the data product actually required? And then the outcome of that uh, meeting was, we have now formalized collaboration with Corbana as well as their partner organizations, uh, plantation maps for calibrating and validating uh, the mapping process, and a time series of sub-plantation level production um, over the past three, four years at least, which we will then use for the forecasting models. Now, very basically what we did, we took data from Corbana as well as other partners in, for example, Dominican Republic, Belize, and we used Google Earth Engine for rapid prototyping of a random forest classifier. Basically build our maps for Costa Rica. This we then fed to the University of Sussex. Like when you get something working, they have the Sentinel Snap toolbox uh, implemented on, on their server side, on their HPCs, the way they do the pre-processing classification, and they come up with their maps. We compare them, see if there are lots of, you know, some sort of errors, and we kind of go back, tweak something else in Google Earth Engine, because it's really good for rapid prototyping. It's got its problems. If people want to discuss about that, I can talk about them later, but there are problems with Google Earth Engine, which is why we're not sticking to that one platform. This is our result as of now. It's a small part of Costa Rica, but we've done the whole country. It's a good agreement between what we've done at Exeter and what's been done at Sussex. That's 30 meter resolution, that's 10 meter resolution. Uh, that's our confusion matrix. The headline value is that we get 98 to 99% accuracy of prediction, right? With the 1% false positive and the 1% false negative. That's great. That's better than what anybody has done before, but uh, we applied the same classifier across Latin America, so about 4 million square kilometers across the tropics, uh, 16 countries, Latin America, Africa, South Asia, Southeast Asia. Good results in Latin America and, and Asia, right? But we need more validation data to actually give you a value for it. Uh, very poor performance in Africa, right? Why? Uh, we've got a few hypotheses. One is planting density with knowledge on the ground from collaborators. We know the planting densities are different between Latin America and Africa, right? Could be farm sizes, mostly smallholders in Africa. It could be the banana variety, but that's a problem in Asia as well, so I don't know why. So that's our priority list of what we need to, to kind of address. Uh, and that's one of the challenges, so we need more, we are working on getting more calibration data from more diverse production systems. Uh, other challenges we've had is trying to automate the process because of the of ESA's data distribution protocol. Yeah, automation has been a little bit of a problem, but we're almost there. And a lot of our computational time is actually going in the pre-processing, even if it's working on, high, uh, on HPCs. So we're trying to uh, optimize this. But at the end of it, what we have is a source of high quality calibration and validation data. We've applied machine learning methods. We've got a classifier working at very high levels of accuracy. Yes, there are regional problems, but we will solve that. Uh, and it's an automated system, almost, almost there. And this is a robust proof of concept which you're taking forward for, for applying for further grants. There's some interest from industry. We'll be pitching to them in about two or three weeks. Hopefully someone's willing to listen. But Growers Association researchers and governments are interested in the outcome of this. All right, thank you.